officers and our board of trustees. Welcome to the Colby Temple for our Sunday service. At this time, if you are fully vaccinated, we'll still encourage to wear a mask. We also offer recordings of this or other services, and thank you very much for that. We now ask that you turn off your cell phones or put them on mute. To begin our service, Daryl Demerit will light three lights symbolizing the unity of body, mind, and spirit. Thank you, Daryl. Our hymns today will be led by Reverend Dr. Lewis Gates. I would also like to bring up bring him up on the podium as a pastor. And welcome to our virtual audience, and I will just uh, paraphrase what our pastor was saying. Um, starting next month, we will be having hands-on healing in the church. There are some change in times. We are taking our Sunday afternoon Grove service to 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. So that are wanting to attend and drive, you're welcome to be here. There will be also some uh, refreshments there for you so please join us if you are able to if you are interested in being a part of this community to be able to uh, be a chairperson or a greeter we do have a platform uh, class that is available for you to understand the decorum and what the expectations are so you are also to join us uh, for that as it becomes available with that being said uh, please rise for the invocation if you are able to and remain standing for our first hymn. Please join me in prayer. Dear Infinite Spirit, we give gracious thanks for this opportunity of this beautiful day and the ability to be closer to the best version of ourselves. Allow us the ability to be present with ourselves as best as possible. Allow us to relax our minds so that we can listen here and take in what may help us in the due course of time. We also give gracious thanks to Casadega Spiritualist Camp Mating Association for providing this infrastructure and this opportunity to bring the community and people together. As we are growing and adapting to the ever-changing times, allow us to be compassionate, kind, and patient with each other, and to just know that we are a big family just walking each other home. And with that being said, amen. Our hymns will be led by our pastor, Reverend Dr. Louis Gates. Our first hymn is on the back of the hymnal, Morning Has Broken.
goes together. We believe in infinite intelligence. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expressions of infinite intelligence. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. We affirm that communication with the so-called dead is a fact scientifically proven by the phenomena of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule. Whatsoever ye would that others should do unto you, do ye also unto them. We affirm the moral responsibility of the individual and that he makes his own happiness or unhappiness as he obeys or disobeys nature's physical and spiritual laws. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any human soul, here or hereafter. We affirm that the precepts of prophecy and healing contained in the Bible are divine attributes proven through mediumship. And we'll turn to the inside cover of our hymnal and you will find the prayer for spiritual healing. And just as a reminder um, that this will follow the meditation, but you can be seated and the healers will send you the healing energy for the needs that you may have. So please recite with me. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and the power of God. Everybody is welcome to join in a guided meditation led by myself, so just relax in the best way you know how and also at the same time please open yourself to any healing that is in need or anybody that you know of that are in need you hold them in that place just compose yourself and with your eyes open or closed just breathe breathe as best as you know how and just be And just know that this is your meditation. And just simply be. And know that your will is the will of God. And just be. And just for a few moments, as you breathe in and breathe out, Examine your heart, mind, and body continuum, and just be ever so simply aware. And just be. you own your power of imagination. You are a magnificent co-creator in this universe. And just simply be. And know that the co-creator within you and this moment allows you to build the world that resonates with you. So extend and push that imagination and create the environment 
the surroundings that you are in complete resonance elements it's all up to your own imagination and choosing and just be In this pure, positive co-creation of yours, you resonate and vibrate and you are in harmony with each and everything that you have created for yourself. simply be And with the knowing that everything is just so right, there's a great opportunity for you to allow anything that doesn't serve you the highest best to be released. Anything in your physical world anything that you hold in your mind and your thoughts and emotions. Any possible residual worries or concerns that you may have, just let them be and let them be set free. You are surrounded by the divine love, divine care, and the divine healing. That is infinitely and available to you. And just for this moment, it is okay to not know why or how this will work. It just simply be. Let that energy of love and healing immerse you in your entirety. Providing you healing and comfort in all planes of your existence, in this human plane, in the etheric plane, in all planes of your spiritual existence.
this place of beauty, there is no need for control, allowance and allegiance and to the will and power of the source itself. as the infinite intelligence, the divine source replenishes all that you have held in your frequency of desire. And you're replaced with a sense of happiness and joy, a sense of stimulating hopeful change within yourself. Just be. And it is okay to be at play. It's okay to enjoy your journey. gently and ever so gently bringing back your mind to your breathing, staying still in the sense of fulfillment and completion. Just become aware of your breath. And this is the time to hold your loved ones that are in need of greater help and those that you know are in need of help. This is a time to share from the overflow of your own goodness to send them love and healing and energy for their highest good. Just simply be and know that you've done your part. Within the next breath, we take this energy of love and compassion to the globe and the earth, and we send yet from our overflow healing and love and compassion to anywhere and everywhere that is needed. And as you re recognize the exchange of giving and receiving is coming to a fulfilling completion, just feel that sense of gratitude, a simple aha within your own spirit. And know that we hold the beauty of God within ourselves. And just continue to breathe and be more aware as you come back into your own physical space in the chairs that you sit in this beautiful Colby Temple. And just relax and be. When you are ready to be back, you can open your eyes and Thank you everybody for joining us in this meditation and sending healing to those that are in need.
Our next hymn will be on page 70, Amazing Grace. And once again, Reverend Dr. Lewis Gade will lead us into this song. portion two of our service, which is inspirational lecture from our guest speaker. It is my privilege to introduce our guest speaker today, and that would be the Reverend Jerry Moore. Just a brief introduction as I asked him, Jerry, how would I like me to introduce you? He said, keep it simple. So in the simplicity of that, I have known Reverend Jerry Moore as long as I have been a part of this organization, and I've always seen him being an active part of the moving pieces of the puzzle. So he's very integrated part of our community and our organization in many different ways. And through his journey, I understand that he's, he's a professional teacher and educator of computer studies in, in his daytime profession, but also he does contribute a tremendous amount of time to Casadega in research and supporting the organization the best way possible. He has served as a president, a treasurer, and secretary, and currently serves as a board of trustees on the board for the Casadega Spiritualist Camp. He is also, uh, to me, known to have a great sense of humor and wit. But you get to know that when there's a slightly warm up time to getting to know Reverend Jerry Moore, but then again, we might be in for a surprise as we listen to him talk, but he enjoys natural law and I've seen him participate in many classes and workshop. He's teaching uh, several workshops here recently and I know that he has a tremendous added value to the organization as a spiritualist, to the spiritualist community in the world. So please welcome Reverend Jerry Moore. That was simple. Nevertheless, thank you very much for that introduction. So, good morning, everybody. So, this past week, I was trying to determine just what it was we were going to talk about this morning. And after mulling it around a bit, I decided to speak about penicillin and Arabian horses and butterflies. 
just a really strange combination of things. It's a little diverse even for me, but I was looking at some of the news headlines and it got me to thinking about natural law and in particular about the law of cause and effect. As we just recited in the Declaration of Principles, uh, we recognize the existence and the impact of nature's physical and spiritual laws on our lives. And one of the simplest and basic observations that we can make about being in this world, about living in it, working in it, interacting with it, is that we will have an effect. And some of the effects we can anticipate and some we do not. We often know the effect uh, that we have on someone else or on a situation is when we can observe it with one of our five senses. But we do not get to choose all of the effects that an action uh, will have when we take that action. We are only in control. Once we release it, we have rather little control on what path that top takes on the top of the table. It can bounce around, it can collide with other objects on the table, off the table, or it can just kind of stay in place. If we are on the receiving end of an action initiated by somebody else, we do have an opportunity, a choice in how we handle it. A typical response would be to compare that with that action with other similar events in our past to see if this matches it in um, some fashion. If we have a standard way of responding and we developed in the past, we'll probably use it again because that's easy. I had reason to visit the doctor recently and the nurse was about to take off a bandage and they asked me, are you ready? And I just responded automatically, yes and then he yanked it off. And I said, ow! And the nurse said, you told me you were ready. And I said, I know, I lied. <laughs> it was more painful than I anticipated. So I was acting out of habit. I was acting out of habit of mind. It's easy, it keeps us from having to think about each and every event and determine what to do every single time. That would be Something that would take a lot more time and effort and responding automatically is easier. But sometimes that automatic reaction is to assume the intent of why someone else initiated an action without ourselves knowing the full facts. And we accuse them of having a certain intent. Certainly, we think, they should have known the effect of their action on us. And similarly, we often make decisions to initiate an action ourselves without knowing the full facts. And living here in Florida, there are plenty of examples of that in the news. No doubt you've heard about the uh, South American python snakes that some collectors have made into pets. And when some of these people have decided they no longer wanted to keep those uh, snakes as pets, they released them into the Everglades where they became quite a nuisance and they upset the ecology of the region. In a like fashion, the water hyacinth that we uh, see all around in our rivers was brought to Florida because it was thought to be an attractive plant. And now it's multiplied to the extent that it clogged in our rivers quite a bit. There are many such examples of unintended consequences, but sometimes, sometimes there are positive outcomes that we did not expect. The Scottish economist Adam Smith wrote of the invisible hand as a metaphor of positive, unintended consequences. He maintained that the individual, seeking only his own gain, is led by an invisible hand to promote an end which has no part of his intention, and with that end being the public interest. He wrote, it is not from his benevolence of the butcher or the baker that we expect our dinner but from regard of, to their own self-interest. In other words, it was a win-win. They won, we win. There have been scientific research about unintended consequences as well. It was the subject of a paper written by a sociologist uh, by the name of Robert Merton in 1936. And he identified 
five potential causes of unintentional consequences. He identified the first of those as being ignorance. It's impossible to anticipate everything or to know everything that would affect outcomes, so that leads to an incomplete analysis. An example would be the irrigation schemes that were implemented in the western areas of uh, the American West years ago. The engineers redirected streams of water to pools to accumulate the water and retain it for irrigation. But doing so meant the water was no longer in motion, and that allowed the growth of bacteria. So what started out as fresh water became a source of disease for those who used it, an unintended consequence because of lack of understanding. A second cause from Morton was error. And this refers to having the information needed, but making an incorrect analysis of the problem or perhaps following the habits that worked in the past but may, may not apply in the current situation. A third cause was immediate interest. If the focus of the decision to take action is to get immediate results, then less concern may be given to the long-term effect in favor of the short-term benefits. A fourth uh, cause was basic values. Values may require or prohibit certain actions, even if the long-term result is unfavorable. I think we can all agree that continuing to use the money spending habits that we preferred when we were teenagers probably will not serve us well when we get to our retirement years. And the final fifth cause he identified was what he called self-defeating prophecy. Now that's not the same thing as a self-fulfilling prophecy in which the projection of an event causes it to actually take place. In the case of a self-defeating prophecy, it's the fear that something will happen causes people to create a solution so the prophecy does not take place. And an example of that was the year 2000 problem. Uh, some of you might remember that. Uh, where there was a fear that there would be massive technology failure because of the programming of computers when their internal clocks would turn over to the year 2000, it would cause all kinds of glitches. But because of that high concern, actions were taken to reprogram those computers, so the big crashes worldwide that were anticipated never took place. So that made it a self-defeating prophecy. So let's summarize. Generally, there are two basic possibilities when it comes to our actions resulting in unintended consequences. The first of these is when an intended solution makes the problem worse or adds additional issues we did not think of. And again, another example of that is uh, back in the times of British rule of colonial India, the British government was concerned about the number of venomous python snakes that were in Delhi. And the government offered a bounty for every dead cobra that was turned in. And initially, that worked really well as a way of eliminating large numbers of snakes that were turned in for the reward. But eventually, entrepreneurs realized they could breed cobras and gain extra income. When the government became aware of that, then they stopped this program. But that meant there were a lot of extra snakes that these people had that were now worthless which they released into the wild, which increased the number of snakes way beyond what they were originally. So, well-intentioned program, side effects that were not anticipated. In cases like this, the possible outcome is a negative, unexpected detriment occurring in addition to the desired effect of the policy. So how do you prevent negative outcomes? Well, the answer, partially anyway, is through thoughtful and considerate, considered preparation and actions, you can prevent some negative outcomes. But you can't prevent all of them. And you already know that. For those of you who are a parent of a child, you know you do your best to raise them with good habits and values that will serve them in their life. But as parents, we also scar our children unintentionally. We do our best that we can, but they grow up with issues to resolve which we had no idea were the result of something that we had a hand in. 
It happens. Completely unintentional, but it happens. The best we can do is to recognize it was unintentional, that we acted with the knowledge and understanding we had at the time. We might do something different if we were to employ our current understanding to it now, but that is what we did when the issue was before us back then. But we cannot change the past, but we can forgive ourselves with the recognition that we are different now, that we have more experience now, that we have greater understanding now. And we remind ourselves that wisdom comes from applying knowledge and experience. So if you had no prior knowledge and experience back then, how could you have had the level of wisdom that you have now to recognize the problem? When it comes to dealing with unintentional consequences, there is another possibility. That is when the outcomes include unexpected positive result. Some call that luck. I was talking to one of my most trusted advisors, my hairstylist, and they relayed a story of a person they knew who went through a divorce. And that person had been working as an engineer up to that point because he thought that it was a responsible career for a person who was married, but he hated it. After the divorce, he felt free to leave his job as engineer. And he enrolled in the police academy and became a policeman, a position he still holds today, and he is loving it. The expected negative event of divorce turned out to be a positive outcome for this man. He embarked on a brand new pathway with consequences which were not entirely clear when he started. How many times do each of us face similar situations? We are given the opportunity to try something and we hold back because we're not sure of the consequences. It is common to try and predict what is going to happen based on the facts that we know. But of course this is challenging. An area where this is prominent is weather forecasting. Been that way for a long time. You may have heard about the butterfly effect. It originated from the meteorological computer modeling that was done back in 1961. A computer scientist by the name of Edward Lorenz was using a computer model to rerun a weather prediction. And he decided to enter a number into the sequence as a short version of the original number. He entered the decimal value of 0.506 instead of putting in the original full value of 0.506127. In other words, he ran it off six decimal places down to just three, a seemingly minor change. But the result was a massively different weather scenario that came out in the prediction. Two years later, he published a theoretical study of this effect in a paper he called Deterministic Non-Periodic Flow. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? But he later renamed this as the butterfly effect and presented it in a paper called Does the Flap of a Butterfly's Wings in Brazil Set Off a Tornado in Texas? The idea, of course, is that a small, seemingly inconsequential change, such as the flap of a butterfly wing, can cause disproportionate outcomes of large consequence. It's important to realize that the outsized effect might be positive. You may feel like you are just a drop in the ocean of humanity, but you have an effect. One which you do not necessarily get to see or experience yourself, but it's there nevertheless. You may have heard the story of a gentleman in the Middle East whose only possession that really amounted to anything for him or his family was a gorgeous Arabian mayor. The mayor was absolute perfection. His neighbors always came by and told him how lucky he was to have this beautiful, beautiful mayor. And his response was, could be, could be good, could be bad. I just know I have this lovely mayor. Well, one night the mayor broke out of the corral and when the man got up the next morning he discovered it was gone. All the neighbors came by and said how terrible, how bad it was that he had lost this mayor. His response, could be good, could be bad. I don't know, I just know that the mayor is gone. About a week later, the mayor came back 
and had seven beautiful Arabian stallions with her. She brought those in the corral with her, and they all went into the corral following her. Now all the neighbors came by and said, what wonderful luck this man had. You have all these beautiful seven stallions and your mayor back as well. And the man said, could be good, could be bad. All I know is I have this mayor and the seven stallions. The son of the man decided to break the stallions so they could be ridden and they could be sold. One of the stallions threw him and the son broke his leg. So he was laid up with a broken leg and a splint that could not help from the chores. Once again, the neighbors were distraught. They said, that's bad. Her son has a broken leg. The man said, could be good, could be bad. I just know that my son has a broken leg. About this time, the king sent his men through the area and took all able-bodied young men in conscription in order to send them on one of his war ventures. The son of the man was passed over and couldn't go because he had the broken leg. But all the neighbor's healthy sons were forced to go. The neighbors came over and said how lucky the man was because his son didn't have to go because he had a broken leg. And you know by now what his answer was. Could be good, could be bad. All I know is my son has a broken leg and didn't have to go with the army. This man lived his life this way. He tried to look at the facts of the situation without making a judgment. Despite first appearances, what seems to be a tragedy may very well turn out to be a blessing. Even some of our greatest scientific discoveries have been the result of unintended consequences. The Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming returned from vacation to his lab and found that mold was growing in a petri dish. He was observant enough to notice that the bacteria in the petri dish did not grow near the mold. This, of course, was the discovery of penicillin, which has since saved thousands and thousands of lives. The really amazing part of this is that this discovery took place because his assistant wasn't very good at doing the dishes. Accents like this can actually lead to progress. Doing something intentionally will have unintentional effects. Even if the outcome is not how you pictured it, and frankly, it almost always is different than exactly how you pictured it, it may be something that you work with. You might remember watching Bob Ross. The, he had the painting show on PBS uh, television. What I remember about those shows was him talking about happy accidents, where an accidental brush stroke was an opportunity in his view to make that mistake into a new feature of the painting, to incorporate the accident in such a way that it was undetectable and actually added to the appearance of the painting, simply adapting to what is instead of bemoaning what is not. I hate to admit this, but my brother once gave me a piece of wisdom I've always remembered. A dog with three legs does not bemoan the fact that he only has three legs. He adapts and he acts like it's normal. He runs with the pack and just goes with it. The world is complex and it's hard to know all of the relevant facts that will affect an outcome. Adapting to those outcomes is an opportunity for creativity. It's easy to hold a fear of what the negative outcomes or uncertain outcomes might result from an action on our part. It is necessary to observe the effects of what we do and try again. Trying something deliberately will give us feedback. Separate, separate the wheat from the chaff. Even if the attempt seems useless, when it seems like it will have no effect at all when you try it, it still can give hope for the change because you took control and you actually tried something. You can feel that you have participated you have contributed, that you have taken a step, and that gives hope. Who knows? Maybe, just maybe, that slightly different way that you participated, different than anyone else would have done, had the butterfly effect with its great outcomes down the road. We have free will. We have the opportunity to choose to participate, to create, to add our involvement to that of others for the betterment of our lives. 
If we are not here to create joyfully, then what else is there? Creating joyfully does not mean to do so without regard of consequences. And it does not mean that we should only be concerned with our own issues. If we were to do that, it actually limits how large and how grand our creations can be. Collaborating and cooperating by joining with others gives us the opportunity to join with energies of the universe in a grander way with many more possibilities, with many more positive potential consequences, including the areas we never thought of or even knew existed. We know the universe will make available more options the more energy we place in motion. We become magnets for options, alternate ways of accomplishing things that may be different than how we first envisioned the outcome. Often these come from unexpected sources in unexpected ways. We need to be alert to these opportunities in order to take advantage of them. How boring would life be if everything turned out exactly the way we projected it would be. Certainly, we would feel safe and secure if that were the case. We would be comfortable with all of our decisions because we would be able to know the outcomes every single time. But there would be no surprises. That means that there would be nothing to learn from. Life would be absolutely dull. What makes life interesting are the opportunities to learn and explore and experience things differently than before. And unintended consequences give us just that. Usually the reason we resist or try to limit unintended consequences is because of our fears that they will be negative to the point and will not be able to cope with them. Instead of focusing on the fear of what we will lose and what the negative consequences will be, Perhaps we should focus on what we would like the outcome to be by being open to the possibility that the outcome could be better than what we thought. Our Declaration of Principles states that we create our happiness or unhappiness as we obey or disobey nature's physical and spiritual laws. Our actions, our thoughts, our intentions all have consequences. Some we can see and foresee easily some we can see with a little more effort, but the magical ones are the ones that we did not expect and add a sense of wonder and amazement to our lives. You might say that happens automagically. You can use that. With a little work on our part and a little retraining of how we think about our intentions, we can leverage natural law and flow with it to have these outcomes often. We can reduce the amount of fear and stress. We can understand that unintended consequences are part of our experience, and they give us feedback to learn from. If we pay attention, we can have greater joy in our lives and help make our experiences richer. We can feel the impact of our own actions in collaboration with others. These are all potential outcomes of working with natural law with intention and deliberateness. We need not fear unintentional consequences because they are simply our teachers, which show us things we did not know before. Knowing this, the question becomes, just how amazing and auto-magical do you want your life to be? You get to decide. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Jerry, and I'm sure you felt that little wit and humor in there. Thank you. Thank you. I like that word, auto-magical. But what was magical for me was I was remembering how, well, before that, just gentle segue, how many of have you ever fallen asleep in your hairstylist's chair? I have, and that's why she's still my hairstylist, because she left me looking good just the way I wanted, so. I just wanted to say magical moments do happen like that. At this time, I would like to say Reverend Dr. Lewis Gates is here for our special musical interlude, and we will be passing our uh, donation baskets to you, so thank you very much in advance for your generosity.
and in um, gratitude prayer. Dear Infinite Spirit, we thank you for the generous offerings that our congregation has shared. Allow us to put them in the highest and Casadega Spiritualist Camp. We do thank for the generosity and ask that it be replaced by many fold, many known and unknown ways of appreciation. Thank you. It's time for some quick announcements. Next Wednesday, September 22nd, our message bearer for our demonstration of spirit service will be Reverend Don Cassidy. Next Sunday, September 26th, our speaker is Reverend Diane Davis. Next Sunday, September 26th, our Sunday Lyceum speaker is Lori Carter. Every Sunday, we have Adult Lyceum, also known as Sunday School from 9.30 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. right here in this building, Colby Temple Memorial. Um, also, to participate in absentee healing, please print the name and first initial of the last name of a loved one, friend, or even a pet in our healing book, which is at the at that end of our church, at the left corner of Colby Temple. There are also some flyers placed in the back corner uh, that have activities. They should be also in your hymnals and bulletins for you to take home. Um, and share with your friends if you so desire. Today we have the time has a good sense of humor and learning to through humor. I think she you would enjoy if you're attending this workshop. This is to expand your intuitive abilities those gut feelings and psychic hunches. Look forward to laughter, learning, and most discovery of your own intuition. There will be visualizations and discussions. Whether new to the wonder of your mind or an experienced seeker, please be with us for an afternoon of intuitive play. This workshop is only offered in person. Our website, casadega.org, also has a monthly information as well as other upcoming events is there. At this time, we'd like to thank our live stream viewers for joining us today and being part of our experience in your own unique way. So thank you very much. We look forward to spending time with you soon next week.